It's an honor to be here. Thanks so much for having me. Thanks for sharing your lunch break with me. This song about uh, trying to move out to an intentional community in very rural Arkansas during the pandemic and discovering some of the lost parts of my brain that were missing that had been absconded with uh, through, uh, you know, late capitalism's post-apocalyptic sort of end run or pre-apocalyptic end run. Excuse me, I got on the wrong end of the apocalypse there. Uh, out there we used to play a game called Critter Critter, where if a critter was running across the road, you could point at it and say Critter Critter, and then uh, if you were the first person to do that, you could assign somebody in the back of the truck to take off an article of clothing or chug a beer or something like that, I'll offer that game to you freely. This is Critter Land. <laughs> I could have been a businessman I was too hot-headed Plus I never had the money Plus I kinda got arrested My sweet old folks thought I'd make a pretty decent one of those I still live the kind of life Where people judge on your clothes Now it's 40 miles of back road On all the rain tires That little blue hymnal Sitting open all the while Singing songs to a god I've met but do not know Making wagers on the critters that we'll see crossing the road. Yeah, the sparrow on the wing taught me to find you. And the possum knows her own mind more than I do. I'm here for all the love that I can stand. Take me to Critter and not so young I've come to know the seasons by the lashing of your tongue but the propane gently sputters there's spring water in our tap oh why can't we feel the peace of this sweet dog upon our laps oh the granny witch and herbalist have remedies for us it's a tincture and a prayer poured down the holler of our guts on the homestead in the pine beds we've grown our holy power laying bare like critters there hour by love and hour yeah, the sparrow on the wing taught me to sing for you And the possum keeps your young closer than I do I'm here for all the grief that I can stand Take me to Critter Lands. Oh, I never thought I could love like this You might think I'm a queer or communist But I'll go along to get along so right Cause why have a God If no one is saved I think love is a burden If it ain't brave I'll live and die forever there Right there in that divide Cause it's hard to say What I have learned from all these hills and hymns We're dying and we're singing And I love you and we've sinned and when marauders come, cause the apocalypse is nigh I want my rifle on my shoulder and my lover by my side I want to be the kind of man that could stand his ground and die Take my fiddle and my good hat, I'll go out in style Gonna do it for my family, not for glory or a god In the war that's raging between the haves and the have-nots Yeah, the sparrow on the wing taught me to fight for you and the possum keeps your teeth sharper than I do. You should bury me where I make my last stand. At the Battle of Critter Land. At the Battle of Critter to do next um, uh, an endangered species in the uh, folk music community. All folk music is at least a little bit endangered because all folks are a little endangered because uh, uh, I mentioned the uh, forthcoming apocalypse, right? I actually don't believe in that, uh, but you know, the sun went away a couple of weeks ago. Did that happen here in Knoxville? The sun went away? 
uh, for a second. It, it's kind of that's terrifying. You think that the world's going to end, but dang it, it didn't, and we have to go back to trying to treat each other well. You know, isn't that a huge? I was ready. Uh, but the particular uh, endangered species that I'd like to revive for a moment is the talking blues. Uh, something where I do a little bit of lazy, relaxed picking as if I was sitting beside a river or something. Uh, and then I just uh, talk in sotto tones. It's perfect for the radio and uh, a genre invented for, you know, long tangents on the radio and a time before organized programming like you would have here at the Blue Plate Special. Uh, anyhow, am I getting ahead of myself? I'm sorry that was so political. I take it all back. Um, uh, I want to do one called Peculiar Missouri, and uh, uh, this is uh, really for everybody that's out there driving right now, because it takes place in a car, so uh, the idea is for you to pretend that you're driving, and that I am sitting side saddle, and that we've been living in the same car for about uh, probably a couple months, so uh, roll up the windows, or sorry, roll down the windows, I'm, I'm sorry about that. Just loping down the highway. Driving home after many months away, we're about to pass through the city of Peculiar in the state of Missouri, as we do always, right before we hit the loving cradle of those hills of home. Let me tell you, friends, there's nothing odd about the city of Peculiar M.O. Heck, you can pull out your google de box and look it up for your own ding-dang self. You'll see that even the name has a boring backstory. Yeah, it's an old railroad town that turned into a suburb that begat an exurb that turned into a certifiable grade A USDA prime small town anywhere, everywhere USA. You know, it's the type of ugly little town you've already been to before, even if you haven't once stepped foot in it. I shouldn't have to take too much time to describe an ugly little town on the outskirts of many other ugly little towns to the denizens of Knoxville, etc. cetera, uh, and no offense. But frankly, friends, if there was a uh, great big uh, waiting room for America, it would not be in some place as beautiful as these mountains here in Knoxville. It would be in the American Midwest, in that interminable expanse of corn and soybean fields. Yes, if America did indeed have a waiting room, it would be there. And if you found your yourself trapped in that great big Midwestern waiting room, you might find yourself a little bored and living inside of the strange irony that this is a reception area and there's no ding-dang cellular reception, so you don't have any entertainment while you sit around waiting for a guy in a white lab coat to take a thousand dollars of your hard-earned money to basically tell you to eat less sugar, maybe wrap it up next time, you know what I'm saying? So if you're trapped inside of that great big Midwestern waiting room, you might be looking for a little bit of entertainment and you see a old magazine sitting on the counter shining like a shrine in front of you you reach out to the old magazine it's a uh, you know use your imagination like uh maybe like uh, Sports Illustrated 2001, Men's Health 1997, something with Tiger Woods or Lance Armstrong still on the cover, you know. Simpler times, you think to yourself as you reach for the magazine and you open it up to the centerfold where you see a little ad courtesy of the Peculiar Missouri Tourism Department. Just one old lady named Gladys. And it says the town's little motto, come visit us in Peculiar Missouri. It's a town where the odds are always with you. And where it's not weird if you love it here. So friend, pull off the highway. Let's get a little rest before a long night of driving. You're, you're driving this rig in this imaginary scenario, remember? So look out, look out for that pickup truck. Whoa! People drive crazy around here. Shoot. Hang a Richard there, Ricky. There you go. I, I bet you know where we're going already, though, friend. Yeah, short of any public amenities, there's about one place you can rest and get a bite to eat in a little town like this after sundown. There's no BLM free campground. There's no YMCA, uh, and the liquor store closes at sundown, so it looks like we're going to have to spend the evening at the Walmart. Yes, sir, we got a standing invitation to the hideous halogen bulbs of the all-night Wally world where an uneasy truce abides between the traveling kind and the mega corporations that deign to keep us from using our advanced degrees for the betterment of mankind. So we're going to jump in there, we're going to have ourselves a little party, what do you think? We step outside of the van. You're a little bit tired of my BS, so you slam the door, it makes me jump. We walk up to the Wally World, I try to grab your hand, but you slough me off. The door slides open. We step inside. Blast of cool air hits us. And that sweet old man greets us. And can't you see how everything in here is glowing, friend? 
resplendent with objects from China, Indonesia, Bangladesh, and beyond. So clean, so sweet, so friendly, old oh, friend. I'm no fan of the way every mom and pop coast to coast got replaced by a superstore, but I swear to God that here, in the place you can get the same deck of cards in Tucumcari and Dubuque, and the same pack of rubbers in Alberta and Atlanta, I might just fall to my knees at the glory and abundance that is the sameness of all things. All things partying away in the last stage of a godforsaken Babylon. It's like we're waiting on the oceans to rise. Like we're waiting for New York City and L.A. to get swallowed up by the ocean. Like we're waiting on our own personal and private apocalypse. Well, friend, I think we might need to get the heck out of here. It seems like I'm having a come apart here in the cosmetics aisle. I'm wondering about the cosmos and trying to ascertain what the right shade of lip gloss is to cover up the joy and shame of living your own accursed existence here on this godforsaken rock. But while we stand here and earnestly consider whether or not we're going to shoplift this coral color of lipstick that we've agreed upon through only mutual eye contact. Let us also briefly consider, friend, how we might be too much for the world, how we might not have done enough for the world, how we might be the last generation of people to have these marvelous middle-class lifestyles staring down at a supercomputer that advertises us at a speed that would make our grandparents literally vomit from confusion. Meanwhile, over in the third world, there's a bunch of countries that we haven't even heard of digging for pieces of gold or cobalt or whatever the heck goes inside of the battery of that supercomputer, and most of them wish they weren't born into this life of suffering at all because they didn't choose to be born and work for no pay after all, and we sit here definitely not holding hands, definitely feeling increasingly disconnected even though we have absolutely everything we could possibly want made out of plastic at the moment's notice and then we just sit here kind of waiting for the wars for oil to transform into wars for water. So I pocket the lip gloss. <laughs> I pocket a second color of the lip gloss. I'm about to pocket a third color but you slap my hand away. You're kind of cheeky like that. <laughs> We look towards the door. That ancient old man is still standing there. He doesn't give a dang if we shoplift a thing. He doesn't get paid enough. We rush right past him. The door slides open. We step out into the tumid night. And friend, that was when you turned to me and you finally took my hand and you pointed upwards to a single shooting star directly in the center of the sky. And you said, Give me hunger, O oh you gods that sit and give the world its orders. Give me hunger, pain, and want. Shut me out with shame and failure from your doors of gold and fame. Give me your shabbiest and weariest hunger. But leave for me a little love voice to speak to at day's end, a hand to touch in the dark room, breaking up this long loneliness. In the dusk of the day shapes, let's be this one little wandering western star, thrust out from the changing shores of shadow. And for God's sakes, Bubba, let's go back home. Peculiar's always going to be here, and well, we're going to be going down Highway 70 westbound again before too long, anyhow. Maybe you let me drive the last leg of this journey, friend. I'd like to sit and look out the window. Maybe try on this lip gloss. I wish I knew what we were supposed to do with ourselves. If you get any bright ideas over there, I sure hope you'll let me know. <laughs> oh, there is trouble in the darksome sky He saw it as a boy From great granddad's covered wagon From the crux of Illinois for the promise of the daffodils amongst the hard limestone 
They carved the die of fortune right above the low bones. They all wandered o'er the salty seas, the prairies wide and warm, just to make a foolish man like me the star can in your door. If the Great Depression made us, there's no need to despair. I won't waste a single moment of the work that brought me here. From the needle pricking mothers that were never taught to read, to the barefoot hungry soldiers that enlisted at 16. Oh, in my dumb debasement, I still find great relief that on the lamb and on the I have hustled towards the overpass to sleep there in the rain. I've settled with my pocket knife to carve out all their names. If the Great Depression made us, there's no need to despair. I won't waste a single moment of the work that brought me here. From the jailhouse on the border To the hold beneath the ship To the weed fields out in Oregon To the first night that we kissed From the darkness of the coal mine To the brightest factory floor To when our kin a better life Is still worth dying for And I still cry my eyes out Every time I dare to touch the spirit And if this is our small lot in life I'm gonna love it like I mean it if the Great Depression made us, there's no need to despair. I won't waste a single moment of the work that brought me here. Oh, the blood is strong with victory that brought us our despair. I won't waste a single moment of the love that brought me here.